Hello YouTube. So the other day I was uh searching YouTube for other videos on the compound. And it turns out that Adam the Woo was here. Now, if you have no clue who Adam the Woo is, <laughs> you'll want to type his name in, Adam, A-D-A-M-T-H-E-W-O-O, -O, Adam the Woo. Apparently, he was out here at the compound, I don't know if it was five or seven years ago, which is even before I moved here. I mean, not before I moved to this area, but before I moved into the compound and was actually living here, had my adventures at Camp Freedom 2 and the yurt adventures and Adam was out here driving around I don't know if he took these little roads they may not have been as overgrown as they are now but um, just like me when he first came into here he was totally lost now I've been here on and off for the last three years so it's no longer as um, daunting as I thought but it is over 200 miles, approximately 200 miles of roadway. And that doesn't include these little side roads here. Um, take the camera off here. That doesn't include these little side roads that um, people have carved in. And some of these were ATV trails, but in my um, exploration of YouTube for compound videos, Palm Bay Compound, I found a bunch of other videos that were made by um, explorers, people in their SUVs, their vans, mostly SUVs and trucks, coming out here to explore. And most people who aren't local to this area, just like me, my first time here, felt that this was like just a humongous wasteland, almost like a post-apocalyptic real-life scene from Mad Max. But this isn't a scene from Mad Max or a movie set. It is a real life housing development that got abandoned. I think in the 1980s, maybe the early 90s, they were, you know, this General Development Corp was developing a whole bunch of housing sections and stuff throughout Florida. And Palm Bay, this area, was one of those sections. And then the housing crash happened, and money just dried up, and all those banks and other investors here in this area, this development, lost their money. Just like that. So what was interesting was they, they put in all the roads, which means they probably cut the grass, you know. I don't notice like pine trees and stuff here. So I think at one time this was all open field. Just, um, now look, you got little roadways for the ATVs. But before this was like, I think all open field. And what you're looking at is what would happen in like a post-apocalyptic world. You know, plants and trees and stuff would just grow and destroy whatever humans build. So here's another trail. And it actually looks big enough for a car to go on, but... I would not go on it because I don't know if you can see that drop there. That's approximately two feet, a foot and a half deep. So a four-wheel drive vehicle truck could possibly go through there. And it may be some of the routes that um, you see covered on YouTube when you search the Palm Bay compound and you see the exploration of others. And although I, I myself felt that this place was huge and you could easily get lost, now that I've kind of explored a lot of it, not all of it, because it's so big and so vast, I can pretty much find my way out um, knowing, you know, several key landmarks and what to look for. There's, I think, about three different ways out of the compound, three different roads that will lead you out. There may be more, but I think three, at least three. So I know some groups have marked the road with these little, I don't know if you can see the little black triangles and stuff there. I think those may be the drifters marking those roadways. I'm not 100% sure. And in this area here, 
I've noticed lately people have been boondocking and setting up camp. You can see there, it looks like uh, somebody actually has a full-blown camper that they pulled out here. Let me try to zoom in over there. That is a full-blown camper being pulled by a truck. And over there, there's like a gazillion. These guys that are out here, I think, are uh, part of the parasailing, paramotor, not parasailing, paramotor club. They have set up a makeshift city. <laughs> I don't know how long they're going to be out here. This is not the weekend. This is, um, know, this is Wednesday. This is Thursday. So they're all out here. And I saw them earlier doing stunts. Now what's interesting is that particular RV right there that you see in the distance. Let me kind of zoom in here. I think they've started to declare the compound as their home. I have seen them out here now for at least two months, if not three or more. They have been parked pretty much in the same spot. Sometimes they leave for a day and then come back, but pretty much they've staked out that area and claimed it as theirs. The police have come and, and talked to them several times. I've seen them out here. I was out here with Renegade Ramblin' Van Man, and we saw the police out there, and he had seen the police with them before, but they're still here, so I think the police can't make them leave. And I know it's not their land. They um, they come from, I think, New York, supposedly. But I, I, I guess that means boondocking out here is allowed. There is a huge amount of boondocking going on right now on this particular side. I don't know if it's some kind of convention, but it, it appears to be the parasailing club. Although, what's interesting is I don't see any of them in the sky right now. They were here earlier, and the sky was full of them. So... I don't know if they flew off and are exploring somewhere, but it does make me question how much gasoline those, um, or fuel, I don't know if they take gasoline, how much fuel they can carry on them or on the, um, the little parasail motor thingy. But you can see here, it's almost like um, RTR. <laughs> People have set up tents, their RVs, there are vans. So, being a van dweller isn't necessarily being a full time person living in a van. Could end up being somebody who does this part time or does it as a hobby. But having the ability to live out of your vehicle gives you access to places that are kind of desolate, like here out at the compound. But yeah, that looks like a huge gathering. And I think it is the flyers because they have those wind socks up there. I don't know if you can see the poles right there. The little pole with the, the wind blowing that sock to tell you which direction the wind is blowing. Which, you know, indicates that this group here is probably flying. I'm going to go ahead and take this side road up. But you can see this area, they did cut down um, the grass. And I heard that... I don't know if it's a parasailer group or the remote airplane group. You know, they have the little remote controlled RC planes. But they actually supposedly are the ones that pay to have the grass. Well, they don't pay. They have the grass cut and they sell the grass as, um, I don't know, for feed, for cattle and stuff. And they use that money to pay for insurance out at the compound. Because insurance here is like astronomical. I think that was a deal they worked out with the city. It helps to keep the compound somewhat um, not fully wild. You've got open fields like this. Look at that. That is like, eh, I wonder if I should just go by there. I think I might just drive through and do a drive-by just to show other people that are out here. But, yeah. When Adam the Woo was here, I don't know if all these people were here, but I think they were. The, the compound is famous now and becoming more and more every day. So, you can see the parasail motor there. So this is a parasail group for sure. And um, people are actually camping out here. I am going to try to not show people. So you can see all the parasail equipment. I guess they're on the ground right now. Somebody even set up a, a snack shack. <laughs> I should set up a, a little photo booth. 
You got a little dog out here. <laughs> I'll let the guy get his dog. But there's dogs running. There's dogs running around out here. <laughs> there are dogs everywhere. All right. I guess the dog's name is Tyler. <laughs> it's people with RVs, parasailing. There's just parasailers all over. Yeah. So it must be some kind of gathering they're doing, a big event for the Parasail Club. I did do a, um, a story on this and interviewed, I think it was Dean and Jeff. I don't know if it was Jeff. What's the other guy's name? Jeff. Anyhow, they, um, maybe it was Jeff Dean? I don't know. <laughs> I'm bad at names. Sorry. But anyhow, check out that video with the Flying Men where I interviewed them and you can learn more about their, their group and their club and the various things that they do. I am going to go ahead and explore a little bit more driving around just to show you how big and vast the compound is. They say 200 miles. It's 200 miles of road, not that the place is 200 square miles, which would be even larger. So it's not 200 square miles, but 200 miles of paved road. And of course, they do have non-paved roads that people have made out here. Now, this main field out here is used by the parasailers. And then I think the people who ride the ATVs come out here. This particular spot right here, I think was where the helicopter actually crashed that one day. Where I was out filming the episode where I was making Thai papaya salad. Sadly, the three people on board the helicopter perished. Rest in peace. <coughs> this is also the strip of road, I think, where uh, that accident, that really bad accident happened. So, the compound can be dangerous. So, if you do come out here, please um, understand that there are others out here and some of those people aren't paying attention. Everyone out here should be paying attention. Uh, the roads aren't marked. So don't assume that because the roads aren't marked and it looks desolate that there's no one else out here and speed across the road because you could have a collision, which has happened out here. People have run into each other out here and you're like, how the heck can they run into each other out here when it's all open? Well, there's cross intersections where um, basically people whiz by really fast. Hey, pallets, you know what this is? Looks like a bunch of pallets are out here. I think I just might have found myself some um, building supplies. So, those are nice pallets too. If they're just leaving them out here, I'm gonna grab them. Cause I think they might be useful. We're gonna go ahead and take the side road, but I see that this video is going on and on and on. But Adam the Woo was out here. Um, he actually did mention, just like I did the first time I came out here, bring a GPS, <laughs> a good GPS, and lots of water, and maybe even some food in case you get lost out here, because it is easy to get lost, but once you've been here a while, or if you're a local and come out here all the time, uh, this is, um, not too bad, actually. As long as you can find the major roads or major landmarks, you should be okay. And if you've been out here as long as Georgie, Georgie Flores, who, who was um, one of the others that I interviewed a while back, he, he says he can actually be dropped anywhere in the compound, even at night, and he can find his way around. Now that is impressive. Of course, we haven't done that yet. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I'm going to sign out for now. Until next time, everyone, I hope you're staying safe. And if you do decide to come to the compound, just look it up. It's a Palm Bay compound. I do recommend following my advice and also Adam the Woo's advice. If you're new here, bring a good GPS and get the heck back out of here. And you might want to mark your location, you know, right before you enter the compound so you can find that same way back out. There's about three ways out. Um, they all tend to be on the east side, I think. I don't think there's any other way out. You have to head east to get out. Because uh, all the other ways, they lead into the water. Now this is one of the little side roads here that I think um, the ATVs go on, but I think cars can also go. Some cars do take these roads, maybe. If they're wide enough. But uh, the ATV trails and the dirt bike guys, they basically follow the power lines. And then um, you have the ATVs that actually cut through fields and make new trails. But you can see we are all the way out on this side and um, 
it still seems to go on and on and on, which it does. So, till next time, everyone, stay safe. I hope you're having a good day. Bye-bye now.